We have, uh, as MMTers, we have a belief in the buffer stock of employed people setting the, the basement uh, for, you know, the employer of last resort. Is that even possible in these developing countries? Do, do you have, in your research, is such a thing possible or are they in such a situation because of the structural constraints that it makes it impossible to implement something like that? Right. Well, that I mean to add a little bit to the some of the the myths that you're describing here. In the case of developing countries, the 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 main thing that you hear from the IMF and and other kind of neoliberal uh, organizations is that developing countries uh, need financial resources. Uh, they need uh, savings, and they can't afford um, to employ everybody or to increase employment. So when you're when you have those structural trade deficit issues uh, that force your central bank to artificially stabilize the exchange rate, the entire focus of public policy becomes about uh, turns towards stabilizing exchange rates in order to eliminate the threat of importing inflation. And when you do that, you have essentially giving up everything else in terms of policy options. So you have abundant resources in terms of human resources and you can't use them, right? Because, you know, you hear this sometimes explicitly from policymakers say, well, if we employ all these people and we give them money, then they're going to start, you know, buying things. And they're going to start buying things from abroad too. So they're going to increase imports and that's going to put more pressure on the trade deficit. And as a result, it's going to cost us even more, right? In terms of external debt. So to me, the solution is to address the root cause of the problem. As I said a minute ago, the root cause of the problem is um, energy imports for many countries and food imports. And no matter what your exchange rate policy is, no matter how much you do as a central bank, you're not going to eliminate the root cause. So as a country, the only way to eliminate the root cause is to direct and mobilize the abundant resources that you have, which is labor resources, towards eliminating the root cause of energy imports. And you do that by investing in renewable energy, especially for countries in the Middle East and countries in, in Africa. It doesn't make any sense in this day and age with the massive decline in the cost of producing renewable energy, not to be completely focused on going 100% renewable. Uh, you look at most countries, we're not even close to 1%. Um, so we're, we're moving very slowly in that direction. And one thing that happens, one th once you move to 100% renewable, you've eliminated the root cause of your problem, which is energy imports. So that's one thing. The other thing you can do is directing, again, the abundant resources that you have, labor resources, towards renewable and sustainable agriculture and food production. Uh, and that's just not happening today uh, in, in developing countries. And you know, the deficit that we really need to worry about, uh, both in developed and developing countries, is the deficit of ideas. It's the deficit of uh, creativity, of ingenuity. We just hear people completely fearing, feeling paralyzed with this sound finance perspective that says, we don't have money, we can't afford it. So we're, we're all into this, you know, collective suicide pact. Uh, and we're going to let millions of people uh, starve and die because we can't think outside the box.